Hello and welcome back to our tutorial. In this lesson we're going to be looking at ways of navigating easily around your score as well as different methods of viewing your score that might help you during note input. So one of the biggest keys to becoming fluent and faster at using Sibelius is being able to navigate around your score easily. And I can't emphasize this enough. Poor navigation skills will significantly slow you down when typing up music and inevitably lead you to becoming quickly frustrated and tense while working. So we all know that a score can be moved around by clicking and dragging, but this can be quite tedious and even dangerous if we accidentally click on an object or note in the score. But thankfully there are many better ways of navigating than this. So obviously Sibelius' creators were aware of the importance of navigation because they've included many many ways of fluidly moving through a score. For example, we can use the navigator window and you can turn this on and off by going to view, panels and hitting the navigator checkbox. If you wish, it's also possible to use the timeline window. It can be turned on and off in the same place as the navigator. And you are of course at liberty to use these features if you so desire, but I personally don't use them very frequently. And the first reason is because I find it much better for my workflow if there are as few windows as possible open on my screen. I often find that a cluttered screen results in a cluttered mind. The second reason is because in most cases I believe there are even simpler ways of navigating and we'll be looking at some of these soon. But first I'd like to talk about zooming. One of the most crucial factors to fluently moving around in Sibelius is the ability to zoom in and out of your score seamlessly. One way to zoom in and out is by using the zoom bar in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. But I think you'll find this is a bit clunky and not very user friendly. A better way is to hold down control and use the plus and minus signs on your keyboard. However, I think you'll find that by far the quickest and smoothest option is to hold down control and then use your mouse's scroll wheel. This is particularly helpful if you're looking over or reviewing your score because you can quickly transition back and forth between an overhead look and the small details. And what is really nice in Sibelius is that if you've selected an object in the score, your zoom function will remain focused on that one particular object. In Sibelius, when it comes to navigation, the mouse's scroll wheel is your best friend. So if you're not using a mouse or you don't have one, it's time to get one. Not only can we zoom in and out, but obviously we can also scroll up and down. I mean, this is the mouse wheel's normal function anyway. But by holding down shift, we can also scroll left and right. And so with the use of just the mouse wheel we can now very simply move in all directions, left, right, up and down, and zoom in and out as we please. At first this might be a little bit disorientating but soon you'll be flying all over your score no problem. But there's one more really lovely scroll function that I'd like to show you. If we hold down ALT and scroll as we did before, we also scroll left and right, but this time each individual scroll notch on the mouse will skip us an entire page. Now this means that you can scroll backwards and forwards through a score very, very quickly. Now for small scores you're not going to need this, but I'll tell you what, if you're working on a project that has hundreds and hundreds of pages, this is very useful. It will help you to navigate around that score quite quickly. Now in the bottom right hand corner of the screen next to the zoom bar, you'll notice a couple of other features and these can also be found under the view tab. Here we can choose to view our score in a couple of different ways. For example, we can choose to have everything laid out in different horizontal or vertical positions. But what we also have here is the panorama feature. And you'll notice that viewing the score in panorama mode 
takes out all of the page breaks and other page size restrictions. And it's for this reason that panorama mode can be very useful when doing your note input, particularly when you're working on larger ensembles or orchestral material. Panorama mode will allow you to just focus on the raw musical data and not have to worry about layout. The only problem is that it can sometimes get a little bit disorientating because you're working on one continuous strip of manuscript paper. One other thing that might occasionally get in the way in panorama mode are the blue bar numbers along the top staff. And to turn these off, we go to the view tab and uncheck the bar numbers checkbox. Another very helpful feature is focus on staffs, which can be found under the layout tab. As the name suggests, it will focus on and only show you the selected staffs within the ensemble. Now focus on staffs can be helpful if you wish to concentrate on inputting score material one instrument at a time. It can be a refreshing way of working because you're so undistracted by everything else in the score whilst typing up a part. And it is of course possible to combine focus on staffs and panorama mode. Now this feature can also be very helpful if you're reviewing and proofreading a score because sometimes looking at the individual voices can give you a well needed new perspective on your piece. So that's all for this lesson. In the next lesson we're going to get into some serious business and dive into the world of hotkeys.